So now we're off to Nottingham to join Pam Rhodes for Songs of Praise. Sunday in Advent brings us to the city of Nottingham and to its own parish church of St Mary's. Now the theme for this Advent programme is light in the city and later on I'll be meeting several people who are bringing light and life to this city each in their own particular way. Well there's light and warmth waiting for us inside now as the congregation welcomes us with come thou long expected Jesus. Joyce Huggett is one of this country's leading Christian authors, and this is one of her recent books, Approaching Christmas, a collection of meditations on Advent, the period that we're celebrating at the moment. So Joyce, what does Advent mean to you? It means three things. The realization that Christ came, Christ comes, and Christ will come again. So I find it a very, very exciting time of year. How do you celebrate it? I celebrate it in all kinds of ways. I start on Advent Sunday by lighting the Advent candle. I have an Advent calendar, which I love to open one window at a time. And I begin to take out the figures from my nativity set. I just start with the animals and with Mary and gradually build it up so that on Christmas Eve, I have the complete set. And after the midnight service, I bring in the baby. So it's a very gradual thing for me. What's the significance of light during Advent? I think it's very important to remember that the Gospels remind us that Christ is the light, the light who came, the light who comes, and the light who will come back. And how do you see that light at work in a city like Nottingham? Nottingham is like lots of big cities with lots of darkness, lots of light. I love it. I love living here. I love it for all kinds of reasons. But I especially love it because I see lots of people being Christ's light to people who are in dark places, the dark places of unemployment, of homelessness, of depression, of marital breakdown, of loneliness. There's so much loneliness in a city like this, as in lots of big cities. And I see 
a whole variety of people being the light of Christ to people in this darkness. Why have you chosen your particular hymn? It's going back to what I was saying at the beginning, that the light who came into the world at Christmas time is going to come. And I believe that we were created for joy. And when Christ comes back, the light, we shall really experience that joy. We have odd glimpses of it, like on a day like today. But when he comes back, we'll really experience the joy of being with the light and in the light for eternity. And I think that's great. Nottingham and you can't help but think of Boots, now of course a nationwide organisation, but it did have a very humble start way back in the 1870s here in Nottingham when young Jesse Boot took over his father's chemist shop. Now his father was a Wesleyan preacher and Jesse was himself a lifelong Christian who combined building up his business with many charitable works. Now, that charitable work is still very much part of Boots philosophy today, and the lady with the job of responding to the many charitable appeals is Pat Dexter. Yes, we receive at least half a dozen appeals from Nottingham Projects daily. We have a very close relationship with most of the voluntary organisations working in Nottingham, particularly in the inner city where the need is so great. Well, one of the projects in Nottingham is the Macedon Trust, and Chris Clayton Wright, you're the director of that. What does the Trust do? We're an organisation that helps homeless people. Uh, we exist in Nottingham and now since this year in London as well. We have about 40 houses in Nottingham and 10 in London. One of your centres is here at the Albion, right in the middle of the city. What happens here? The Albion Centre is a coffee bar and day centre um, where people come during the day to uh, ask for help, food and sometimes shelter. And unfortunately, because um, Homelessness is growing so fast and to such a great extent, some people sleep. Um, it's completely inappropriate for people to sleep here, but there is, there is absolutely nowhere else. Um, it's, it's somewhere where people just come and they can, um, when, there's, when there is nothing else, and we, we don't charge anything for coffee or meals. We provide three meals a day. Um, and usually a mattress on the floor if, they, if we can't relocate somebody somewhere else. And we're exceptionally dependent upon volunteers um, and voluntary contributions. 
Well, Pat, the work that you've seen here has obviously made quite an impression on you. Well, my work has brought me into very close contact with people like Chris and other Christians working in the inner city, and I was inspired by the way they live their lives and the way they help other people. Um, and because of that, I thought very deeply about religion and actually went out looking for God and found him. Chris, the Macedon Trust is a Christian organisation, so what hymn have you chosen for us? We've chosen The King of Love My Shepherd Is because it is um, a version of the 23rd Psalm um, and that is a very relevant um, hymn, not only to Macedon but to homeless people, particularly because it talks of the, the valley of the shadow of death, the dark night, um, through which people, when they're homeless, have to pass. And they come to know very often, usually, I think, that God is with them. If you're a parent and your marriage has broken down and the arrangement is that you see your children on one day each weekend, where do you go? To the park or to a cafe? Well, this United Reformed Church in Nottingham has come up with a much more homely and welcoming idea. In these rooms, parents and children can relax together and catch up with their news. Have you been a good boy at school? It was two years ago that a local magistrate who happened to be a member of this church realised through her work that a centre like this one could help to keep relationships alive. Mary Lower is now one of the volunteers who meet and chat with those who come. I've not seen it working before. Mary Lower's idea has not only proved popular here in Nottingham, but it spread in a few months to nine other towns around the country. It's a positive answer to some of the pain of divided families and a source of the kind of hope and light in the city which is the message of tonight's Bible reading. This reading is from the prophet Isaiah. Hearken to me, you who pursue deliverance, you who seek the Lord. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation, for a law will go forth from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples.
One of the liveliest members of the congregation here is a sprightly 81-year-old, Gladys Marriott, standing now beside the font that she was christened in all those years ago when you were just six weeks old, is that That's right? That's right, yes. Now, you've had many occasions, both happy and sad, in this church since then, haven't you? Yes, I have, yes. What do you remember especially? Well, I remember my wedding, which was very happy. I had seven bridesmaids and the church was full of all the girls from the girls' clubs and everything, you know. And you've known many friends over the years, some of whom you've said goodbye to yes, in this church Yes, I've said too. goodbye to quite a lot. Lovely people, lovely girls, you know. Do you enjoy singing in the church? I do very much, yes. What sort of I'm on the front you? row, I'm <laughs> on <laughs> Well, you've chosen a grand hymn of praise, all praise to thee, for us to all sing this evening. Obviously, God has been very much yes. a part of your life. Very much, yes. And I praise God every morning and evening. And I love coming every Sunday and Thursday. It's my life. Andy Fisher lives with his wife and daughter in an area called the Meadows, between the city centre and the River Trent. I enjoy living here, quite frankly. The community spirit is strong. Um, it's changed a little bit since my old and my younger days because they built all these new houses and the place, and a lot of the old characters have gone. I think it's a beautiful place, actually. It's uh, somewhere I've lived all my life. As a place, it's quite built up, but as you can see, there's a lot of nice greenery just a stone's throw away and we're quite close to the city centre about half a mile from there and all the local communities now have you always been a christian no no i've only been a christian two years i'm a i'm just a baby <laughs> but uh no i hadn't i'd had nothing completely to do with church i went to church once and i fell out with the place i come out married i didn't <laughs> didn't enjoy that one bit i enjoyed the marriage but but uh, no apart from that i'd never ever been to church before in my life never so what made the change Jesus made the change. It was just, um, I had quite a few upsets in my life, only about a couple of years ago. I had two very close friends who died in a car crash, um, which started me asking questions, just why, and it was the same age as me. I grew up with him and I loved him very dearly, both of them. That happened in April, the two lads died, and in August, there was a fire at the, where I used to live at my mum's home, and in that fire, my, my mum and my eldest brother died. Um, that nearly turned me against God, because I thought that God had somehow took those because I had become a Christian when the two lads died. But I went to a Christian basics course once, a couple of hours every Friday for six weeks, and got introduced to Jesus Christ. And uh, I accepted him, and I asked him into my life. I had grief, anger, pain, but I gave them all to him. And now I'm the man you see now. 
I still have troubles, I still get headaches and everything else, but Jesus is just brilliant and I just gave my life to him and that's it. And what about your choice of him? Does that reflect what's happened to you? Yes, the hymn, Servant King, is like the, it's like the gospel in a hymn. It's what Jesus did, not only for me, but for everybody. Um, it just t says that he'd come down from heaven and that on the cross he took all my grief and all my, all my pain. And that's true. Burrell is a member of the Wesleyan Holiness Church at the Meadows, where she takes a central part in the special services of healing. Lord, I pray for the special anointing tonight, O oh God. Lord, that as I lay hands upon your people, they may receive healing from you, O oh God. Father, you said that I should lay hands upon those who are sick, and that, Lord, you'll be here to heal. In obedience, O oh God, I lay my hands upon your people now. I believe that when I lay hand on them, that something from me goes through them. Because sometimes if you talk to people, they'll tell you, sometimes there's a warmth. Some will say there's like electric, you know, but they feel something, and I can feel something from me going through to them. Can you tell just by laying on your hands what's wrong with them? In some cases, not all the while, but in some cases you can tell. It's a sort of direction your hand, you know, move to the part where it's affected without you even knowing. But um, when the Lord called me, I know exactly what he wanted me to do because he told me. He said to lay hands upon, upon the people. And I gave my life to him. And I'm committed. So thing. I'm committed to him. And uh, I go how to do what he bids me to do. Many people don't. And when the Lord talks to you, how does that happen? In many, it, it talks to me in a audible voice like you're talking to me, only that I can see you and I don't see him. 
But um, the first time it happened, it was a bit strange. I didn't understand what was happening to me. But after that, you know, you recognize the voice. And I know when he's talking to me. Now, what about the hymn? What have you chosen and why? I've chosen O Boundless Salvation. And not only because it's, it's my favorite, but it was written by William Booth, who is a local person from Nottingham. And in the last verse, I said, and now, hallelujah, for the rest of my days, shall gladly be spent in promoting his praise. And that sums it up for me as well. Lord Jesus, prepare us for your new coming in grace at Christmas. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Bless our chapels, our churches, and our city. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, and fill our hearts with faith love and hope. Come, Lord Jesus. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this night and always. Amen.